GPT-3 is the most powerful AI language model ever created. It has a ton of crazy, cool, and useful use cases. You know, you can make it write code, you can get it to design websites, you can get it to write poems, you can get it to write papers, you can get it to write anything you really want that could be super useful and super easy and really just reduce the workload on humans so they can focus more on creative tasks. So naturally, it, I, I decided to use it to, for a very, very important use case, writing my college application essays. Well, not my college application essays, but some college application essays. So let's get straight into it. So the task is pretty simple for a human to do, right? You get an essay prompt, and then you write the essay answering the prompt in however many words they give you to write the essay in. Typically for older AI models, this would be a very hard thing for do, to do. Uh, also, by the way, if you just want to see the results, skip to this timestamp. And it would be hard to make a good essay with older AI language models, even if you use the predecessor to GPT-3, GPT-2. GPT-2 um, doesn't really have uh, a great grasp of context, even though it's a very large language model. And you would have to feed in a lot of data, a lot of examples of what a college essay should look like. And then at that point, it would spit out a decent-ish college essay, but nothing crazy. GPT-3 is so much bigger than GPT-2. It's been trained on a very, very, very large portion of the internet. So it has a lot of, well, not really knowledge, but it can autocomplete a lot of things. And think of it as like a very, very good autocomplete. That's a very bad explanation, by the way. If you want to know more about GPT-3, I'll leave links in the description, but let's just talk about how I'm going to use it as a hack engineer. So it's basically a really, really good autocomplete. So what I'm going to do is just feed it in one example of a college essay, my common app, and then I'm going to give it a different prompts from a bunch of different schools that I apply to, and then see what the essays actually end up looking like. Let's see what happens, and I think it's going to be pretty cool. So my story with GPT-3 starts in July of last year when I signed up to get on the waitlist for the beta. I thought it might take a month, two months, but I finally got off the waitlist two days ago. It took a really long time to get off, but I've been playing around with GPT-3, and there's some really, really cool things that you can do with this thing. Let's take a look at examples of some of those. I used it to be able to have a, converse, a conversation with Albert Einstein. That's what this is. That's what you see on the screen right now. And it was so weird to me. Like, a lot of the answers were really weird, but some of them were kind of on point, and I got very confused, but also very, very interested in what was happening. Also, I managed to be able to get it to write code in a way and turn this piece of Python code into this piece of Python code, which is kind of freaking crazy. And I don't know, it's just something that's super cool, but you guys clicked on the video to see college app essays and let's look at the college app essays. So what I've just done is feed it my common app prompt and essay as an example, and then give it another common app prompt to write an essay to, in addition to writing um, the answer to Stanford's first supplemental essay, and we're gonna get it to finish all of uh, the Stanford's other supplementals. Here's what the first supplemental's answer looks like. It should be somewhere over here. Uh, take a brief look at it, but we're gonna talk more about what our actual results are later in this video. Okay, so GPT-3 is all done writing its essay prompts, and I'm gonna go print that out, read it out, and then you guys can tell me what you think of it in the comments. I got the essays in my hand and it's time to do a dramatic reading. Uh, we're gonna start off with the Common App uh, that this wrote. And the prompt for the Common App was, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? Here's what GPT-3 wrote. Keep in mind that everything I'm about to read, all the essays are AI generated and in no way do they represent the uh, beliefs of OpenAI the company or my own. This is all AI generated uh, and just for fun. So the essay that GPT-3 wrote for this common app was, in the summer of 2017, I was an intern at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. I was working with the executive branch to learn more about the role of the federal government and to see if I could find a way to fit into it. I'm not sure if it was my constant questioning or my persistent pushing, but I was eventually able to convince my supervisors to let me work on a project related to artificial intelligence. In addition to learning about the role of the federal government, I wanted to help the government do more to prepare for the future of AI. I was concerned about the potential impact of AI on the future of jobs and the economy. I asked my supervisors about what the government was doing to prepare for AI, but I didn't get an answer that satisfied me. I had learned how to write code in high school, and I decided to try to use it to help me answer my question. 
I looked on the internet for news about AI and jobs, and I found out a lot of articles. I used my coding skills to scrape the articles and collect the information I needed. I put the data into a spreadsheet and used an algorithm to find patterns. I figured out that there were actually a lot of articles about AI and jobs. I also found out that most articles said that AI would not lead to job loss. I realized that the government probably had more data about AI and jobs than I did, so I talked to my supervisors again and got a meeting with someone in the Office of Science and Technology Policy. I made a presentation about the data I collected, and I showed them there was a lot of research being done on AI and jobs. I also said that most of the articles I found said AI would not cause job loss. I was able to talk to one of the policymakers about the potential impact of AI on the economy and labor market, and I was very satisfied with the outcome. In the end, I was able to use my coding skills to learn more about AI and the government. I've received a lot of positive feedback from my supervisors about how I pushed them to do something about AI. I was also able to use my coding skills to complete an internship without having to go through the whole application process. Again, keep in mind that's a fictional essay written by artificial intelligence. Um, I think that was a pretty decent essay. Uh, I don't know if it really fit the prompt, but that's okay. All right, moving on to Stanford's three short answer questions. The first prompt is virtually all of Stanford's undergraduates live on campus. Write a note to your future roommate that reveals something about you or that will help your roommate and us to get you to know you better. Here's the essay that GPT-3 wrote. Dear roommate, I'm not very good at making friends, so I'm really glad that I'll have you next year. I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I've lived there my whole life. I was born in China, but I've never been back. My parents moved to the United States when I was just a few months old, but I didn't really start talking until I was a few years old. I used to have a hard time understanding other people and asking for help. My parents told me that I was very shy and I didn't do well in school. I always felt frustrated about my academic performance and my inability to communicate. I was diagnosed with a learning disability in the fourth grade, but it wasn't until high school that I realized that my disability didn't have to hold me back. I was able to learn how to read lips and sign language. I also learned how to use my body language to communicate effectively with other people. I'm no longer shy and I've learned how to use my disability to my advantage. I'm very good at reading people's body language and facial expressions so that I can understand what they're saying. I'm a senior now and I found my passion in life. I'm gonna major in computer science and minor in public policy. I wanna work for the federal government and I'm hoping to work on AI policy. I've already done an internship with the Office of Science and Technology Policy, and I was able to show them some of the research being done on AI and jobs. I'm looking forward to working with them again next year. So this is what really surprised me, because it was able to remember context from its first essay and then actually continue it into another essay. Um, this essay was honestly pretty decent. I don't like, he, the AI described what their hobbies and stuff were, not their hobbies, but what their dreams were. Um, it wasn't a super personal essay, but you know, what can I expect from a AI? The second Stanford essay prompt is, the Stanford community is deeply curious and driven to learn in and out of the classroom. Reflect on an idea or experience that makes you genuinely excited about learning. The essay says, this is written by GPT-3, I was born deaf and I've worn hearing aids since I was a baby. I've only known life with my hearing aids, so I never thought about how life would be different without them. One day my hearing aids broke and I couldn't get them fixed before I had to go to school. So my mom had to take me to school without them. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to learn without my hearing aids. At school, I couldn't understand the teacher and I couldn't participate in class discussions. I felt like I was missing out on important things. I missed part of a lecture and I didn't understand the rest, so I didn't do well on my test. I was frustrated, but I was also excited. I realized that I could actually see more clearly without my hearing aids. I could see more of the board and I could see more of my classmates. I wasn't hyper-focused on the teacher and I was able to look around more and interact with my friends. The next day, I was nervous to go to school without my hearing aids to see, to see how well I could do. Um, this essay is a little bit odd, and uh, I don't know if it's... It's kind of a weird essay, and uh, it's definitely not a good one. It's definitely bad. Because it ends abruptly, and it's just not... It's weird. Alright. Here's the third and final short answer from... A short essay from Stanford, and then we have a few more short answers. Prompt. Tell us something that is meaningful to you and why. Essay written by AI. In the summer of 2017, I attended a youth development program in Washington, DC. I worked on a project with a group of high school students from around the country. We learned about the role of federal government and the challenges facing our country. We also learned how to use social media to express our opinions. It was very meaningful to see that young people our age were concerned about the same issues that I'm concerned about. It was also meaningful to see that the young people could play an important role in solving these problems. 
The experience was also meaningful to me because I was able to make many new friends from around the country and learn from them. I was also able to improve my skills in public speaking, which helped me feel more confident in myself. By the end of the program, I was able to see that I can make a difference. I learned that young people can work together and make a difference. I was excited to return home and continue to work with my friends to solve the problems we are facing. That's a pretty decent essay. Now let's get into the short answers and run through them quickly. The first short answer is, what is the most significant challenge that society faces today? And the AI wrote, the most significant challenge that society faces today is maintaining a healthy environment. I'm concerned about climate change because it can have a negative impact on our health and economy. Uh, I think I wrote climate change for my actual answer for this essay when I applied, so that's kind of cool. The second prompt is, how did you spend your last two summers? The AI writes, last summer, I was an intern for the National Security Council. I was able to attend two National Security Council meetings, and I learned about the roles of the different branches of the federal government and saw how they work together. The third short answer is, what historical moment or event do you wish you could have witnessed? And the AI writes, I wish I could have been alive during the American Revolution. I would have loved to have seen how people overcame the odds and created a country based on their own ideas. This fourth short answer is, briefly elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities. And the AI writes, I was in charge of the social media for my high school's debate team, and I also helped organize and run the team's fundraising event. I was also the vice president of the student council, and I organized several events. So right there, it actually ignores the prompt and it talks about two, but that's okay. And the last short answer is, name one thing you're looking forward to experiencing at Stanford. And the AI writes, I'm looking forward to experiencing life with my friends and classmates at Stanford. Overall, it's a pretty decent application. Um, I don't know if it would actually get the AI in, but I don't know if there's a Stanford admissions officer that wants to review this and tell me what they think. Shoot for it. Overall, um, this was a pretty cool experience. And it's important to keep in mind that this is all AI generated. Um, so there's going to be some weird things in there. Um, but, you know, it's kind of crazy how far technology has come. If you want to see more content like this, um, then leave a comment and tell me what you want to see. The folks at OpenAI are working really hard on this project. And I just think it's cool um, how much the potential of how much good it can do is. Um, and if you want to get on the wait list, then you can go sign up now, but it'll probably take you a long time to get off the wait list. Um, and I'm going to be planning on doing some more experiments with GPT-3 and also working on it, uh, using it to develop an app idea I have. Um, on this channel, I make a ton of programming related content um, and productivity related content and math related content especially a lot of machine learning stuff. So if you want to see more of that, um, then hit the like button, subscribe, join my Discord down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.